Hey, Money Multipliers. Welcome back to another episode of The Money Multiplier Podcast. I'm your host, Hannah Kessler, and we ask ourselves, do our dollars make sense? So in today's episode, we're going to dive in to how to use a infinite banking policy, a whole life policy to finance the cars that we're purchasing in life. Because I don't care how old you are today, how much money do you have back for just the cars you've went and purchased in your lifetime? Here's a hint, zero. So if I do nothing more than just show you how to get all the money back for all the cars you're buying for yourself and your family for the rest of your life and to get all the money back for it, I think this is going to be a pretty cool episode, is it not? So we just got back. Actually, Pops and I, we were on the road here for a little bit. Um, We're up in Buffalo, New York. We're hanging out with Chris Noggle, doing some things. And then uh, after that, we flew down to Greenville, South Carolina. We're hanging out with Jonah and Jeremiah of the Cash Compound. They go by the Banking Bros as well. So you can go find them on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. And it was a really good week. A lot of leadership meetings and things like that. So I got a lot of cool things coming down the pipeline that I'm excited to share with y'all. But I'm back in the office. Um, Later today, I'm actually going to head out. It's Biketoberfest down here in Daytona Beach. And uh, it's Friday, so I got myself a little beverage here as I'm filming this. So go grab yourself a beverage, a coffee, a tea, or snack on anything that you desire. And uh, come on, come join us as we talk about how to finance the cars in our lifetime. Because right now... How do we go and purchase our cars? We purchase cars one of three ways. We either pay cash for it, we bank finance it, or we lease it. Because I don't think y'all stole the car. I mean, a few of you on my channel right now, a few of y'all look a little shady. I'm just kidding. But I don't think y'all stole the car. So you did one of three ways. And let's walk through the traditional ways of how we finance cars right now. So if we pay cash for the car, you know, obviously we're saving up for the money somewhere, maybe in a savings account or maybe your brokerage account somewhere. You're saving up that money. But here's what you're doing. When you go out and you pay cash for a car, folks love paying cash for cars because you think when you pay cash for things, you don't got to pay any payments and you don't got to pay any interest. But is that true? The answer is no. I'll just go ahead and give the answer away. Because what you're doing, and I, and I wish I drew this out. I don't know. I'm going to do it with my, my fingers here for y'all on YouTube. But If I kind of diagram this out, what you got to do is kind of picture this right here. This is your zero dollar line. And what you got to do is you got to save, save, save for that car. You go and pay cash for the car and now you're back at zero. Then you got to save up because that car that you purchased, you're going to have to go and buy another one. It's not going to last you you, your whole entire life unless you're 90 years old. So what do you got to do again? You got to save, save back up for that next car and then you're back at zero again. So when folks pay cash for things, you're really just getting one step ahead, but then you're taking two steps back because you're going back down to that zero dollar level. This is what's called the opportunity cost of our money. So what you're doing by paying cash for things is you're giving up that future earning rights or the future opportunity cost that that money could have earned you because when you go pay cash you had to physically withdraw it out of that bank account checking account savings account and go over and give it to the car people so the money is gone it's left your hands left your family forever because the money was inside of your pocket earning you interest somewhere somehow I guess unless you're keeping it underneath your mattress or storing it in your safe somewhere, right? But but you're missing out on the future earning rights that that money could have earned you. So that's paying cash for things. You know, bank financing it. 
obviously we go down to a financial institution, a bank, and we request to take a loan out. So then we're paying them that principal and the interest payments back to them. So they're the ones who's capitalizing on that transaction there. And then finally, if you lease the car, you know, why folks lease cars is just because they want to drive a nicer, newer car for a cheaper monthly payment. And when you lease an item, you're renting it. So at the end of that lease, you got to return the car. Maybe you buy it outright at that time. So, so you're sending all of those payments to that person or dealership that you're leasing the car from. So they are the ones who are capitalizing off of that transaction as well. You're building up no ownership, no equity inside of that transaction. So how about a way of how to go out, go purchase the car, but then get all the money back, aka never losing out on the future earning rights that that money could have gotten you. So let's walk through it here and how we're utilizing the policy. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to look up here on my screen. So you can see on my screen here, we have the machine. So what is the machine? High level recap, if you have never heard of this before, the infinite banking concept, what we're doing is we're utilizing a specifically engineered whole life insurance policy to go and finance the things in life. Doesn't have to just be cars. You can literally use the money for anything. But in this example and for today's episode, we're honing in on car purchases. So that vehicle that we're building up the capital in is the whole life policy. Now, reminder, this is not just the traditional whole life policy that can go buy from your brother-in-law that sells life insurance, because we all got a brother-in-law that sells life insurance. No, no, no. It's got to be designed specifically for high cash value banking. And this is a whole life policy, not an IUL, not a VUL, not a universal life, not a term in insurance. So this is a whole life policy designed specifically for this concept. So when we put in premiums inside of the policy, those premiums, how I want you to think about them, are deposits. They are deposits into my banking system because each time that we make that premium deposit that's in there, we have a cash value that's made available to us immediately. And my definition of immediately is within 30 days. So why I call them deposits instead of payments, because yeah, it's a premium payment, right? We're paying for this premium and putting the money inside the policy. But when we traditionally think about payments, we think of it as a debt, an expense. But if I put money inside of an account that I own, I control, and I have immediate, within 30 days, cash value access to that capital, is it treated more as a payment or a deposit? I think deposit. And what word do y'all like better, payment or deposit? So these premiums go inside of that policy and that premium deposit that we put in there, we have the cash value. Now, just real quick, these premiums, you get to determine what you want to deposit into your policy. You choose that premium that you want to deposit in. I'll get into uh, that subject here in just a second as well. So we got premiums that go into it. Then on the policy, there is age in death benefit. Now you'll notice here on the chart, age and death benefit, they're grayed out. Why are they grayed out? Well, they're grayed out because they simply do not matter. Ooh, Hannah, you just said age and death benefit don't matter, but I'm a type A analytical. I need to know all the details or I'm not going to grasp a single thing moving forward. Okay, well, I understand because my mama is the same exact way. She's a nuclear engineer and I feel like that's as, as analytical as they come. So let's explain age and death benefit for my analyticals on the episode. 
So why age and death benefit do not matter is because we're focusing on the cash value that's inside of that policy. There's going to be death benefit on the policy whether we like it or not. So if I have an example, let's say I'm comparing three individuals, all right? Three individuals age 20, 40, and 60, all in the same equal health. And let's say that they, that they have a $20 bill in their pocket. All have a $20 bill and we walk into the grocery store. Who between the 20, 40, and 60 year old is going to be able to buy the most amount of groceries with their $20? Well, all of them. Doesn't matter how good you look, how bad you smell, the color of your skin, the language that you speak. The same $20 is going to buy you the same amount of groceries. Now, let's walk across the street. Let's go to the life insurance store. Age 20, 40, and 60, all in the same equal health, and they have a $20 bill in their pocket. Who's going to be able to buy the most amount of death benefit with their $20? The younger one. It just makes sense, right? The younger one is going to be able to buy the more death benefit based on that dollar. It just makes sense. That's how life insurance works. But I am not here talking to you about the death benefit that's on the policy. Death benefit's going to be there whether we like it or not. I'm here talking about the cash that we can use inside of this vehicle to finance the things that we're buying in life. And I really, really want to drive that point home because I'm going to get done here and some of y'all are going to watch this and say, oh my gosh, that is a really, really cool method. But Hannah, I'm just too old to do this. No, you're not. You're not too old to do this. Just because you're older means that you're going to have a lower death benefit compared to me over here being a 24-year-old, right? That's all the difference is. So go talk to my gentleman, Mr. Wayne. So Wayne lives down here in Florida with me. He is 78 years old and he just started his first policy because it doesn't matter how old you are, you have have to bank and finance in your lifetime whether you're nine years old or 90 years old. So age has no consideration when we're talking about the cash value that's in the policy. Age only affects the death benefit. And as Nelson Nash would say all the time in his live seminars, if I can solve your need for financing cash while you're living, you'll have enough death benefit to leave to your family and heirs. Heirs, I should say. I keep messing up that word. I don't know what it is. That H just kind of wrangles me up. I, my dyslexia doesn't help, I guess, too. <laughs> so... So with this, you know, age only affects the death benefit. It does not affect the cash that's inside of that policy. You got it? Good. All right, let's move forward. So in this example, this gentleman came to us and he says, okay, I want to put in 10000 a year inside of my life insurance policy. Now, 10000 this is a number that he chose. Remember, I told you, you get to determine that premium deposit that you want to put into your policy. So if 10,000 is too hard to swallow, too large to swallow, shave off a zero, do a thousand. If 10,000 is too easy, add a zero, do a hundred thousand. I don't care. You decide what you want to deposit into your policy. And another tidbit as well, you can deposit in on a monthly basis, quarterly, twice a year, or even annually. So you even get, get to pick that mode of premium that you want to do too. So he's going to do 10000 a year inside of his policy, and he's paying this premium for seven years. Now, real quick, 
if I'm a good coach and you've been hanging around the campfire for some time now, you will quickly understand that you want to pay premiums for as long as you can and as much as you can because of that uninterrupted compounding interest that's happening inside of the policy. But in this example, just to isolate the car purchase, we stopped paying premiums after seven years. So he puts in 10,000 for seven years. Then what he does is in year four, he takes out a loan from his policy, $25,000 because he's in the market and he wants to go purchase a $25,000 car. Another tidbit, in real life, I would never have you wait till year four to start using the cash inside of your policy. Because how quickly did I tell you that your loan money becomes available to you within 30 days? Again, I'm doing this just to isolate the car purchase here. So in year four, he's going to take out 25000 to go purchase this car. So he takes out a loan from the insurance company. Oof, Hannah, you said loan. I got to pay that money back. I got to pay it back on the insurance company's terms and whatever interest that they're charging me. No, you don't have to pay it back. You don't have to even pay it back with interest, but I'm going to coach you on how to play an honest banker in your life and to pay yourself back and to pay yourself back with interest. But just to answer that question for some of y'all thinking about it, no, policy loans are not required to get paid back. And we'll talk about loans versus withdrawals here later on in the episode. So he's going to take out $25,000 from the policy and go purchase the car. So he takes out the twenty-five, dollars walks down to the car dealership. He finds the car that he wants and he hands over the $25,000. The dealership has their money. He's got the car. Everybody walks away. Transaction's done. Now, because he borrowed from himself, do you think it's a good idea that he should pay himself back and pay himself back with interest? Yes. I see a lot of head nodding. Yes. But do we ever do it? No. Because y'all just want to treat your money like it's free money. No, no, no. Do not steal from your banking business. We're talking about the banking business in your life right now. So he is going to pay himself back and he's going to charge himself back with interest. Doesn't matter what you want to do at the interest you want to charge yourself. This is the freedom and the control of you being your own banker now. So how much do you want to pay yourself back? How much interest do you want to charge yourself? How long do you want the loan to be outstanding for? Is it three years, five years, 10 years? I don't care. You're your own banker now. Now, you get to set those terms for that loan. So he decided that he's going to pay himself back $500 a month or $6,000 a year over the next five years. So let's see what happened. From year one to year eight. Year one to year eight, he has put in a total of $70,000 as his premium deposits into that policy plus he paid himself back 30,000, so 25 for the principal of the car plus an extra 5,000 of interest. So he's put in a total net injection of 100,000. 70 plus 30 equals 100. That is his true net injection inside of this policy. But we did take out 25,000 to go purchase the car. So 100 went in, we took out 25. 100 minus 25 is 75,000. Well, I'm sitting here at the end of year eight, 75,000 is my net injection, and I'm sitting here with the cash value bucket of 73,226. If you take that 73, divide it into 75, you just got back 97 cents for every dollar that you spent on that car purchase. Again, how much money do you have for the cars you bought up to this point in your life? Zero. 
So, all right, I got 97 cents back on the dollar for every penny that I spent on this first car purchase. That's just year one to eight. Let's say that time goes on over the next five years, my car wears down or maybe I want something new. So I'm in the market and I want to go purchase myself another car. Or maybe it was mama who was driving the, the last five years and now it's daddy's time to go purchase the car. So what we're going to do is we're just going to rinse and repeat the cycle. We're in the market. We want to go purchase another $25,000 car. So where do I pull the $25,000 from? The cash value that's inside of the policy. We take out that loan from the policy. We have the $25,000 in our hands now. We walk into the car dealership. We find the car that we want to purchase. We hand over the money. They give us the car. Transaction's done. Let's see what happens again on the second car purchase here, year nine to year 13. In this example, he's no longer putting in his premium deposits. Those are no more. But because I went and borrowed from my bank, I should pay myself back and pay myself back with interest. So he's going to do the same thing. Pay himself back 500 a month or 6,000 a year for the next five years. So from year nine to year 13, we put in a total of 30,000 for that loan repayment plus interest we're paying ourselves back. However, we took out 25 to go purchase the car. So 30,000 went in, we took out 25. Our true net injection is 5,000. Well, year eight to year 13, that is a $22,000 growth, and you can look right here up on the screen, and for my podcast listener folks, this may be a good episode to tune into the YouTube channel, but from year 8 to year 13, our cash value grew from 73 to 95 with a $5,000 net injection. That's a $22,000 plus growth with a $5,000 net injection. Wait, Hannah, I'm not understanding. How is this money in the policy still growing even though I'm taking the money out and I'm using it to go purchase the car? I thought that if I just physically take the money out, go purchase the car, the money is gone. Well, no, no, no. Let's talk about the differences between loans and withdrawals. When you withdraw from an account, you are physically taking the money out and you have stopped the compounding on that money. You have stopped the motion on it. Well, if I take out a loan from the policy, here's what's happening. You're putting that policy up for collateral and you're taking a loan from the general funds of the insurance company. So even though you are using that $25,000 out here in the real world, that twenty-five dollars never left your policy. It is always in there growing and compounding as if it was never even touched. You just simply put the policy up for collateral and you're using the general funds of the insurance company's money. You're using their money here in the real world. So this is why and how the money is still growing, even though we're going in there and taking out those policy loans. This is what I'm talking about when I say opportunity cost of the money. When you start to filter it through the policy first, now for the rest of our lives, we are going to earn that uninterrupted compounding interest. Now, I don't want to get cheesy on y'all, but do you guys know a gentleman by the name of Albert Einstein? Albert Einstein says compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. Those who understand it, earn it, and those who don't, pay it. 
So what do you think we've been doing all these years, going down to the local bank, taking out loans from them? We've been paying them all of this compounding interest because banks don't use compound interest. They charge us compound interest and they pay us compound interest, but they're not using it themselves. So we're not going to get into that on on today's episode. You can go back and watch some of my other episodes where I get a little bit deeper into the weeds there. But that is why. That's the why that the money is still continuing to grow even though we're taking out the money in the real world because we're using policy loans. We're taking loans from the policy. Now, get this. If y'all been sleeping up to this point, it's time to start waking up. I want to see what happened over the course of these 13 years because 13 years goes by pretty darn quick in our lifetime does it not i mean for my folks listening right now who are 55 years old didn't it just seem like yesterday you were 43 yeah 13 years goes by pretty darn quick so i guess i did my math wrong this is 42 anywho (laughs) i leave the mental math up to my father so so Oh, ooh, ooh, I got something for y'all. How about this? 13 years ago, I was 11 years old. Ooh, I probably stung a few folks there. So, so 13 years goes by pretty darn quick. So let's just see what happened over the course of these 13 years, just purchasing our cars with the policy. Because remember, you got to go purchase the cars anyways. You're going to go finance it somehow. Now that I know a smarter way, I'm just going to practice the game right along with the elite and the wealthy. So from year one to eight, we put in a total of 70000 as our premium deposits. So seventy went in plus 30000 for the first car purchase, loan repayments back to ourselves, and another 30,000 for the second car purchase. So 70 plus 30 is 100 plus another 30 is 130. 130 is our true net injection inside of this policy for 13 years. But I did take out 25 for car 1 and 25 for car 2. So 130 went in, but I took out 50. 130 went in, I took out 50. 130 minus 50 is 80,000. So 80,000 is our true net injection inside of this policy. But get this, we're sitting here at the end of 13 with 95 and some change as cash value inside of that policy. I'm no math genius or anything, but if I put in 80, I purchased these two cars, and at the end of 13 years, I got 95,000 of cash value in the policy. How much did it really cost me to buy, drive, and own these cars? Well, my simple mind is thinking, well, nothing. I made money doing this. Well, no, I can't sit here and tell you that it costs you nothing to buy, drive, and own these cars because you had to start your policy. You had to start this system because year one of the policy, when this gentleman put in 10000 of premium, he did not have access to the full 10000 of cash value yet. But are y'all in this for the short term or the long term? Y'all tell me long term, but you tend to get hung up in short term thinking. So when I'm talking and explaining this concept, this is a lifelong process. This is an additional step that you're adding to your financial life. Because really, is there anything stupid, ridiculous, or idiotic here that I did with this policy? No, I just bought this stupid life insurance policy and I'm using it to finance the cars in my life. Again, y'all got to go buy the cars anyways. Now I just know a smarter way to do it, have how to get all the money back for these cars I'm buying in my life. So over the course of these 13 years, I basically made an extra 15000 from the policy because of that uninterrupted compounding growth that's happening in there. 
Oh, and tidbit for y'all too, if you're new to this channel, is that compounding growth, is it taxable or tax-free? That's tax-free growth. Is it guaranteed growth? Absolutely, it's guaranteed growth because we get a guaranteed interest rate inside of that policy contract that does not fluctuate with what the markets are doing, who the president is, or who the president is pissing off in the world, right? These are life insurance contracts where we get a guaranteed interest inside of there. So essentially, I came out with 15000 extra on top plus... I got one and two cars that are sitting inside of my driveway that I've been driving and riding around town in and I can sell it. I can donate the car. I can literally do whatever I please with that car. And now I just got all the money back for all the, these two cars that I purchased in my lifetime. How do you like buying cars my way? Here's the thing though. You got to be disciplined with this concept. It's kind of like saying like, hey, should everybody own a credit card? Hell no. I don't think everybody should own a credit card because some of y'all aren't disciplined with your credit cards. I know how your spending is because I talk to a lot of you folks every single day. But if you know how to properly leverage that credit card, could it be a great asset and tool to you? Absolutely. Same thing here with the policies. So here's the three rules that we got to follow. You got to pay yourself first. Pay yourself first. When you make those premium deposits into that policy, that is you paying yourself first. And here just recently, I've done a few episodes on this. What I'm talking about is when you pay yourself first is you, when you get money into you, I don't care how you produce the income, it comes through the doors. You pay everybody else first and you just hope that there's some left over for you. You got to stop that mindset and that mentality. Pay yourself first. Are you worth $100 a week? I hope you think you are. So start paying yourself first and that's the premium deposits that go into the policy. Then rule number two, pay yourself back and pay yourself back with interest. Treat your money just how you treat the bank's money. If you don't, all you're saying is the banker's money is more valuable than your money. And that's just simply not the truth. So pay yourself back and pay yourself back with interest. I kind of touched on it a little bit earlier. Are loans required to be paid back? No, let alone with interest. Not at all. And the why behind it? is because you got that death benefit. You are collateralizing that death benefit. I hate to break it to y'all, but aren't you guaranteed to die? So at the time of your passing, any outstanding loans on the policy is gonna get subtracted from that death benefit. Your death benefit is always gonna be higher than the cash value that's inside of the policy. So the insurance company can never lose. That's why they simply do not care what you're using the money for and when you're gonna pay it back because they know you are guaranteed to die or graduate, I like the word graduate. So, so at that time, they would just take any outstanding loans, subtract the death benefit, then whatever remaining portion, that gets paid out to your beneficiaries. So the insurance companies know that they're gonna get made whole again. However, you need to pay yourself back and you need to pay yourself back with interest. You need to pay play that honest banker in your lifetime. Now, this is where the control and the freedom of us being our own banker comes into play. Because what if it's just not feasible for me one month? What if my kitty cat gets really, really sick and I got buku vet bills that I gotta go pay? Or I get into a car accident or maybe there's a death in the family. You know, life happens, y'all. And what if it's just not feasible for me to pay myself back because I got more expenses or maybe I'm out of commission for a few months? That's okay because I would rather be in debt to myself rather than somebody else who come in, who can come in and repo that car right off my driveway. And trust me, that's no fun. My father, when he was younger, he actually had that happen before <laughs> when he was living in St. Louis before he met my mom. So 
And you are in control of this transaction and you get to determine the terms for yourself and this loan. So rule number two, pay yourself back and pay yourself back with interest. Rule number three, recycle and recapture the money. Y'all, if this works for a car, what else do you think it works for? Do you think we can go buy boats? Ooh, Hannah, you got an episode of how you buy boats with the policies. Go back and watch my channel. Or can I get all the money back for the taxes I'm paying? Ooh, my New York folks, my Californians. Ooh, y'all better listen up. This is how I pay my annual taxes with. How about this? All right, because y'all, if y'all been following me, you know, I went out and I purchased myself a Bronco and I want to give y'all a little update here too. So actually this Bronco, I've been calling my guys, so I think I should see it in about a month. So hopefully when this episode rolls out, I'll have it and y'all will see some pictures with it. But, um, and dude, it's not just like the traditional, like Ford Broncos you see out there. They're only making about like 1900 of these vehicles. It's the limited heritage edition and it's coming in the color Yellowstone because yellow is like one of my favorite colors. So freaking excited about it. <laughs> so, um, so this is how I'm doing it. I'm literally doing the same exact thing with my six policies that I own. Just instead of it being a $25,000 car it's a $75,000 Bronco it's just a larger number then what do you think I'm gonna do maybe instead of paying myself back 500 a month I start paying myself back 1500 a month okay that's the rule that I want to set for myself so with this concept, you are in the driver's seat. You get to determine all these terms of how you want to take out and really use this system because you can use the cash and the policy for literally anything. So in the Bronco example, it's just a larger number. That's the only difference. But does the concept still work the same? Absolutely. How about this? Get this, y'all. What if instead of this being 10,000 premium deposits, let's call them 1,000 premium deposits. All right, they're 1,000 premium deposits. And instead of that being a $25,000 car, what if it's a $2,500 MacBook computer? And actually, that, that was my first ever purchase. When I was 18 years old and I started my first policy, this MacBook computer that I still use to this day, that was my first purchase with my policy money. I mean, these MacBooks, they're, they're kind of high-ticketed suckers. So uh, instead of it being a $25,000 car, what if it's a $2,500 MacBook? And then instead of paying myself back $6,000 a year, what if I pay myself back $600 a year? What happens to the numbers? They're just smaller. Does the concept still work the same? Yes. What about, I want to do $100,000 premium deposits. $100,000 premium deposits, and instead of this being a $25,000 car, what if it's a $250,000 house? What happens to the numbers? They just get bigger. Now I'm just going to pay myself back $5,000 a month or $60,000 a year. Will I still get all the money back for that house I purchased? Absolutely. This is how I'm actually financing for a condo. Okay, here's a little update for y'all. Another one. Damn, I didn't think I had this much crap going on in my life. I guess I do. But uh, I'm closing here soon. So this month, the month of November, I'm so excited. So I I'm moving over to Daytona Beach Shores and um, I bought myself a condo. And this condo, it's the most expensive thing I've ever purchased up to this point in my lifetime and how I'm doing it is I'm using this system these policies this is how I'm financing for this condo and y'all reach out to me if you want to see some pictures I'm happy to share it's so freaking beautiful <laughs> so this concept and these policies can work for literally anything. I don't care what it is. How about you're an investor? You're an investor on the line. All right, let's talk investor to an investor because I like real estate investing. I do a lot of private lending. And how about somebody calls me up? They say, Hannah, I'm looking at this property. I just purchased it, but I need some dollars to go out and do a rehab on the house. 
Okay, what are you looking for? I need 25,000. Okay, you need 25,000? I'll be your lender. I will lend you the money for this rehab. And for the collateral, I'm going to take the first position on that property. So in the event that you don't pay me, I'm going to come and foreclose on you just like a regular bank would. Y'all, if you are lending money, I'm going to stress this right now. It is very, 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 very important to get that collateral that's equal to or preferably greater than the investment that you're making out to it. So what if somebody calls me up and they say, Hannah, I need 25,000 to go do this rehab. Would you loan me the money? Sure, I'll loan you the money. I'm going to require first position and you're going to charge me or... I'm going to charge you 14% interest. I lend out anywhere from 13 to 16%. So I will give you the 25,000. Then get this. Who do you think is paying me back the 500 a month or 6,000 a year payments to me? Oh, that borrower is now. Ooh, Hannah, this just got really, really interesting. So I don't care what it is in your life. You are now taking every liability, turning it into an asset, every depreciating asset, and turning it into an appreciating asset. All just by simply funneling the money through the policy first. All we're doing is just adding this one additional step into our life. And again, this stuff is not hard, y'all. It's just the mental shift. It's the mental shift of what we've been conventionally taught to place and store the wealth or to traditionally invest the money in. The markets, mutual funds, leave it with my broker down there at the corner bank. So I really want y'all to wrap your minds around you being in total ownership and control of your financial life. Now, and here's something else too, you know, I know I brought up investments and how I use my policies to invest my money, but I'm not a financial advisor. I'm never going to tell you how to go make your money, how to go invest your money. You guys know how to make money. Y'all are really, really great at making the money, but you suck at keeping it. And all I'm doing is I'm just showing you how to keep that money in the family. Here's what my dad always says. Doesn't matter how much you make. It only matters how much you keep. Here's a question I want to ask y'all as well. If you ran a business... You ran a business and let's say this business profits a million a year, but your overhead is 900,000. That's our first option. A million dollars in revenue, but the overhead is 900. So our profits are 100,000. Business number two, how about I, I uh, bring in in revenue 300,000. I bring in in revenue 300,000, but my overhead is 100,000. So my profits are 200,000. Which business do you want? Number two, because it doesn't matter how much you make. It only matters how much you keep, honey. Hopefully I'm really drilling that in your heads right now. Some of y'all are thinking to yourselves, Han, I get it. Just shut up. Let's move on now. <laughs> so Hopefully I really honed it in here when we're using the, the policy to go out and purchase the cars. And, and if you really think about it, y'all, how fast, how fast does 13 years go by in our life? It goes by pretty darn quick. Have you heard of the gentleman? His name is Rick Warren. Rick Warren says life is like a marathon. It doesn't matter how you start. It only matters how you finish. This is the game of life. You just got to start. The wealth train is moving down the tracks, whether you like it or not. So it's your responsibility to be at the train station, hopping on the train tracks or the train, I should say. So hop on the train. We're all walking down this road with you and together. Now, before I end the episode here, I want to, oh, and here's our three rules. Pay ourselves first, pay ourselves back with interest, recycle and recapture the money. If it works for a car, what else does it work for? Literally anything. Now, here's some resources I want y'all to, to understand and get to. There is a gentleman by the name of Robert Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki, y'all know him. He, read, he wrote a book called Second Chance. In that book, Second Chance, 
Robert Kiyosaki talks about the infinite banking concept, but y'all read right through it and didn't think a second thing of it because it's never been explained to you in this way. How about Tony Robbins? Tony Robbins, Money Master the Game. Chapter 5.4, 5.4 of that book, Tony talks about this concept. But again, you read right through it, didn't think a second thing of it. And here's another resource too. My homie out there, Mr. Larry Steinhaus. And if you're listening to this, Larry, hello, we miss you. We love you. Uh, actually, I did a, an episode with him not too long ago. Check out that episode. Uh, Larry walks us through how to use credit cards to purchase houses. Ooh, that sounds a little risky. What in the hell is going on over there, Hannah? <laughs> but Larry Steinhaus, he has a book called Money Hacks. And I love this title. He, here's the title. Because everything you think you know about money is wrong. I love that title. I totally agree with you, Larry. But chapter 13 in that book, Larry Steinhaus talks about this concept. Larry's got policies. This is how he does his real estate investing, his stock options trading and things like that. He runs his school, investor schooling up in Langhorne, Pennsylvania. So shout out to Larry. Y'all should really go follow Larry and see what he's up to as well. Um, he, he actually has a radio show every Sunday too. Um that he will put on. So go check out Larry and kind of see what he's up to. But here's some resources. Go out and just explore this stuff. You don't have to take my word for it, let alone you don't even have to work with me. This is all that I do. I eat, live, and breathe this concept. And really, I am second generation to this because my father was the one who introduced it to the family, started this concept first back in 2008, and it's just totally expanded up to the point where within the Kessler family, we got 32 banking policies. And this is all that we do where we store, keep, and create wealth, keeping that money in the family. Now, last thing I'll show y'all, okay, because we just went over kind of one section here. If you want to go back and rewatch this whole entire presentation where I get deeper into the weeds, right here up on the screen, you can scan the QR code. It'll take you right to our presentation on the website. Or you can go to our website, themoneymultiplier.com. You'll find it on there. And if you got questions for me, reach out. You see my cell phone number up there on the screen. You got my calendar link, my team's calendar, and then even my email. Reach out to me. Ask me questions. Challenge me. I want to know what you are thinking. Never hit that arrival syndrome, just like how Nelson Nash always teaches us. So... I think that's all I want to say in today's episode. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully I showed you how to get all the money back for all the cars you're going to buy, drive, and own in your life. I did this already with my conversion van. Y'all have seen my van if you've been following me. And then now I'm going to do it with the Bronco. And then now I'm going to do it with this new condo that I just purchased as well. Doesn't matter what it is. I'm getting all the money back and I'm keeping that money within my family. I don't think there's anything cool than this and anything that has so much freedom and control and if you know about something that's out there that I don't know about please tell me I am always looking for somewhere in some place that's even better than these policies that we have I haven't found it my family's been looking for over 12 plus years for this and this is what we do just in our own personal life so thank you y'all for tuning in and until next time, we'll see you then. We are here every single week, Tuesdays. And if you got topics, questions, you know where to find me. I'll catch you next time. See ya.